Hi, I'm Lester Small, pastor of the Bell Road Missionary Baptist Church, and uh, here I just want to share a little something with you. I used to be a musician. I don't play much anymore, but every once in a while I end up finding myself having to repair a piece of equipment. And here's one of my favorite keyboards is the Kurzweil PC2X, and I figured I'll just go ahead and record this while I'm talking to you while I'm working on it. So in case someone runs into a problem of repairing it, uh, you will know how, you have some idea how to approach the repair of this expensive keyboard, whether it's the 2500 or the PC2X or any heavy duty high-end workstation. You, you want to be very careful in your approach of taking it apart. In this case, I had to replace a key, key that was broken. Uh, with one of the little tights in the church uh, dropped something on it and, it and it and it broke. So what I decided to do is just order the key and decide to go into it myself. And over the years, I've had some great keyboards uh, all the way back into the 70s when one of my favorite keyboards was the Ar Omni. I don't know if you remember the Ar Omni, but it was one of the sweetest strings that you wanted to, to have sitting on your deck and also on your rack, rather. And also the Fender Rhodes and the Horner Clavinet, those were three of the favorite keys. Then in the, in the late 80s and 90s, my favorite keyboard was the DX7. But this one in the 2000s is probably one of the best keyboards you could find. It's the Kurzweil PC2X. It's an old, probably about five generation keyboard. And I want you to know that uh, anytime you're gonna work on one of these, especially with keys, I don't have any knowledge about uh, electronics. I have to turn that over to somebody else. But knowing this keyboard, it is like all uh, well put together keyboards. They are they are in components, and usually you're going to have ribbon cables where you can take components apart. Well, I decided to take this apart to replace this G2 key. And certainly, um, the one thing I want to point out that would be helpful to you is when you get ready to take a keyboard apart, if you've never taken it apart before. Take time and look at it. Take time and just examine it. Uh, don't try to figure anything out. Just let the design speak to you. Look at the outer case and determine, well, how do I get in here? And don't move on the first glance. Take time and just look it over and just look it over and over. Sometimes the design of it will trip, trip you. And so the first thing you want to do with this keyboard is take these end caps off is in caps on each end of it. And you want to take them off. And one thing I always give you a rule as a technician, you always want to take all of your bolts and put them into a container. Don't leave them out because they have a way of getting away from you. So you, you have two end caps on this model keyboard. And most keyboards are pretty much the same general design. And when you take those end caps off, what you want to do is get you a flashlight. And you want to look in here and try to get an idea of your bolt pattern, or your design pattern, how the parts are bolted together. And it's gonna take some effort and some patience to look and determine how that bolt pattern, uh, how those components are bolted together. You even have some bolting and, lay and la levels. And, and so you wanna be sure you look at that. The other thing you, you wanna be mindful of is you wanna look on the backside and, and and sort of compare your bolt pattern on the outside as well as on the inside. You want to look down in here and you want to see see if you can recognize where the, 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 the keyboard separates. In this case, this, this Kurzweil, which I've already taken it apart, I just joined it together for that purpose. The brains, which is the brains, it's the, the mechanism, uh, comes off. If you notice, it slips right under this lip, and it, 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 it certainly butts up to the keyboard uh, that way. It has about 16 screws on it, so you want to be mindful of those screws and be sure to put them away. When you first take them loose, you want to be sure that you are mindful how you disengage uh, the electronics. And with this Kurzweil, with this, this particular keyboard, it has really three ribbon four ribbon connectors that we need to connect a disconnect 
from the from the components on the inside. These various components uh, serve as one of, in various functions of the keyboard. So pretty much all of them have ribbon cables, and mo most of your high-end keyboards nowadays have ribbon cables. And one thing you want to remember when you look at your ribbon cables very carefully, because some of them have a slip interlock like these that the, the wires just slip in by you by you sliding up a, a, a lock a lock harness on it. And then some of them you have the regular ribbon cables like this. Also be mindful where the, where the number one pin is and always know that your marked end of your ribbon cables always go back and line with the number one pin. And be sure that you understand those things. That, that is a good thing. And you may wanna mark them like ribbon cable number one uh, ribbon cable number three, and ribbon cable number two, so you'll know. You want to be sure you take a track record, you write everything down as you pull apart, because once you get this big boy back together, you may find out something's not working, and you got to go all back over again and do it again. So let's take this part and put it over here, the brains. And one thing, we're very mindful not to put to rest these on the buttons, because sometimes we can do something and we'll end up doing more damage to the parts that are separated than we are doing anything else. So let's look at that. Now, the, the part where I want you to be concerned about was this, this area here, uh, where we gotta go in here and work on the keys. Once we get this apart, we wanna look at the framework and try to determine now how do we get this key in and out. So you want to take time and examine it. Once again, you take your board, your, your light, and you look down into the framework. You get a feel for the bolt pattern, how the components come uh, bolted down. And once you look at it, you'll see that this entire keyboard framework is locked in with about eight bolts and when you look at the back when one thing that I knew when when I this key was broken that the back side of this key was hooked under a rail so knowing that I knew that we needed to that some way this whole keyboard rack needed to be slid forward in order to get the key out so that's one of the things we, we, we want to be mindful before you go in is how do I get this done? And once you get in here, you will find out that this fantastic keyboard is all others of the same standard or this, this uh, caliber of keyboard. They are very, really simply put together because they're put together by components. So the one thing we do, we take these bolts loose right here and we take them loose on the back end and the front end. And what will happen, this will slide forward and your key will go in. This is the key I just replaced, the G2 key right here. And pretty much on this keyboard, which is 88 keyboard, all of them except maybe your end keys are pretty much standard keys. They'll fit in every, in every, uh, in every scale, every pattern of your, your keyboard. So once you get that in place, you want to be sure that you, you tighten it up, you, you put everything back together, and then pretty much pulling the, the key out, since I put it together, pull it out and put it in already. You have a spring here, you have an interlock, um, uh, what would you call this, a graphite piece that will lock the key in and it goes under a rail here. You'll figure that out once you get in there. But this will save you an awful lot of money. You just want to be careful that you know how to go back and put it together. And once that's done, you can go back and start reassembling the system. And certainly you want to uh, go ahead and understand how these lips engage. And you take this, you take your brains, which is what I call it, and you bring it over and you set it up, you set it up here. And you take time and reattach your ribbons into their particular uh, sockets or particular connection um, boxes. And once you connect those properly, you take it and be mindful of damaging your ribbon. And you take it and you, this lip right here will slide right under here. And you 
want to be sure you're working on a table where you have flexibility where you can pull it off the side and line the bolts up or you can set it up on a, a rack on both ends but this lip slides under here like that and pretty much on each side this is what the lip does and when you get that lip in there then that's your keyboard is back together pretty much you put your end caps on on and you're good to go so we certainly hope this will help you it can help you fantastically just knowing how the keyboard is assembled how the, how the casing is assembled but one point I want to make to you again to be sure that you take time and let the design speak to you in other words be patient keep looking after a while you're gonna say wow I see a difference here so don't assume and go and turn bolts real fast or quickly or too zealously because you'll create a problem. Take time at each stage and determine what the bolt patterns are. Let the design speak to you so you will see how it comes apart. Look, hope this has been helpful for you and certainly hope I don't have to do it again. I will tell all the little tykes at the church to quit playing around the keyboard. We love for kids to to, to be in discovery with the keyboards, but every once in a while, something will happen. Be patient with your children. Know they're in discovery. Don't run them away from the instruments, but teach them how to learn. This is Pastor Smalls. God bless you. Thank you.